Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet for up to $1,000 back in a beautiful bonus bet. Basketball comes on every night, almost every other night. You can find something that you could play some of that bonus bet money on. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code VOCH, V-O-C-H, VOCH. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Loses, okay, only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code VOCH, V-O-C-H, VOCH. The crown is yours. So how about this? We talked about the big boards changing and all that. I have sure. 10 takeaways. We might get to seven of them, but we'll see. Depend on I'll try we, to go quick. Yeah, uh, You're good. You're good. Take your time. We might just end up fussing. That's why. Um, <laughs> so the first change I noticed, okay, cool. Marvin Harrison still is, is wide receiver one. We can debate that. But now I see Roma Dunze. And this is yeah. Dan- this is Daniel Jeremiah's top fifty. I don't know if he's uh, doing this based on what he's heard or his own opinion, but we're just gonna yeah. say that this is his own opinion right now. And this is a a rare lineup. You know, we 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 normally see Marvin at one, and we can debate that. You know, right. not me and you right. because we like neighbors, but um, right. this is the first time I've seen anybody have Roma Dunze over neighbors. Neighbors being wide receiver three right here, Brian. What's right. your what's your thoughts on this takeaway? I think what happened is that maybe that, again, Daniel, a former NFL scout, a uh, pretty good scout in his own right, um, he's probably putting Rome up there because he went through the workout yeah. and everything in Indianapolis. I think he's probably given the kid a little love. Um, you know, scouts probably walked out of that uh, that workout that day at Lucas Oil and were really, you know, like, wow, this kid, uh, it, he checks all the boxes. He, he is an incredible player. Uh, neighbors, you know, he is going to do his workout in Baton Rouge. Um, we'll all drive down there. We'll be part of the workout, see what's going on. And that's kind of where I think that one goes right now. I think he's just giving that, that Washington kid some love. He's a hell of a player. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would have him behind the other two guys, like, you know, you and I've talked about before, sure. but I, I think that, I think that Daniel's giving the kid some love. Uh, just by why he showed up and when he showed up at Indy, he did everything. The afterwards, trying to get the three cone thing right, you know, he was trying to get a certain time. Mm. Just showed competitiveness right there, and I think that's where Daniel Jeremiah is giving him some love. How about this? Um, we talk about you know drafting these guys. We always talk about the the physicals, right? But yeah. intangible stuff, right? Like the 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 one takeaway I took from Worthy. Right. And and we ain't, right. we ain't talking about where right now, but we just talking about Roma Dunze. But but Rome did kind of okay, running my forty, let me stop so I can really take my time getting my forty, right? Because he wants to get it yeah. right. I watched right. Xavier Worthy run a damn four two five and he could have went home. But there's an intangible competitiveness in him to where we could look at the dudes that aren't even working out, right? Hey, I don't want to work out. Right. But Worthy says, I ran this forty better than all y'all, but I want to beat John Ross. Like like so if right. you're evaluating a a player we know what he is on film but intangibly that competition competitiveness want to get it right want to beat john ross want to be better than than his own time how much do you weigh that in your evaluation man it's huge it really is because you know you go to indianapolis and man it it is it is a hard week not only for the scouts it's hard on the players the interviews i mean now they made it a a tv event the way it is it's spaced out differently You, you don't you used to work out in the morning you know, but man, at nighttime, it was crazy with the interviews. Uh, you know, now they limit the number of interviews. The combine is not an easy thing for players to go through. And when you get a player that gets through the medicals, the interviews, and then goes out and lays it out on the field and competes that way, that checks a lot of boxes in scouts' minds because of that, that, that state, I don't think there is a bigger stage for somebody to have to to perform on than what you do with the number of people that watch the combine, the NFL eyes all on you, you know, your the 40 time, all that stuff is so important. Yeah. So the guys that compete and finish it and complete the task always get high marks with the, the personnel departments when they walk out of Indy. Sure. You know, like, and, and, you know, if I have, you know, two wide receivers tags touching and I'm, I'm just, right. you know, they're like right here, right. Let's just say it's worthy. Right. And I don't know, Jalen, um, Polk or something, right. Or just McMillan, yeah. whoever, who, who, yeah. who, who, whoever's touching tags with worthy for right. you. Right. 
this right. this really can come down to which one of these dudes worked the hardest or which one of these dudes wanted more. Yeah. And I saw that out of Worthy, man. And there's also a play on film that just showed his effort. We can do it later or whatever. But I saw that and I was really impressed by that. And, you know, I, I don't want to move him up the board just for that. But if it's two dudes tags touching, maybe I'm more inclined to lean on the dude that I have evidence that he's a hard worker and he wants to be great. Well, and you know, the interesting is the two Texas kids, the both the wide receivers, sure. Mitchell and Worthy. You know, I mean, people are trying to separate those two guys. You know, it's like, wow, well, you know, Worthy does this and Mitchell does that. And, you know, though I think they're pretty, pretty close to each other when you talk about tags and stuff like that. But that's the thing about it is you're going to go, okay, how was the interview? How was the workout? You know, what was my impression of him? what's the size? What, what, you know, what, what's this guy, this guy look like physically? So, yeah, it's all part of it, and it, and that's what the, the beauty of the combine is. If you're a player and you thrive in that combine setting and tags are touching and maybe you worked out and the other guy didn't, and now I have to go to Baton Rouge to watch a guy run, which I will absolutely do. I'll go to Baton Rouge. I, you know, it's what I do. It's my job. Get in the car and, and you know, March, April and drive around and go time players. That's my job. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel like that uh, – but that combine, man, that you when you're in the when you're in the draft room and you're putting that tag up on the board, mm -hmm. you start to think about like, and the first thing you see is on those on those tapes, those profile tapes, is they put the workout up on the, in the to lead off. Yeah. So you get the players, you know, you get the picture of the player, you get his height, weight, speed, you get all that, and then you get the actual physical workout at the combine. Sure. And that's where you go, oh, oh, I remember this now. Yeah. I remember this. And then some of these players don't have workouts. That's that can that can sway you one way or another. That's the issue. I want to show you one play, Brian. Then we're gonna move on to this next part right here. Xavier Worthy at the top of the screen right here. Let me just yeah. tell you what I what I love the most about this play. And it's an intangible play. First of all, he's gonna beat the hell out of this corner, right? Just 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 gonna run right yeah. past him. But but Quinn Ewers kind of lets him down. Quinn Ewers underthrows it, and you know it gets it gets picked off, right? Now Xavier right. Worthy's on the ground, tackled by this TCU character, and the ball has been picked off, right? The TCU defender is running to the other side, but you see Xavier Worthy get his ass up. Hold on, Brian, Brian. You see him oh, get you. up, yeah. and you see him chasing down this dude that just caught this damn pick. And Xavier Worthy actually recovers the fumble. And you can right. only do that if you love football. Now, look, I'm not taking shots at 88 or nothing like that, but I've seen him pout. I've seen him quit. Yes. I've seen him kind of drug, you know, some bad habits. He does the shoulders. He'll go back like yes. this or whatever. Xavier Worthy on this play, Brian, showed me that, hey, man, I got high quality effort. And then when yeah. I saw what he did at Combine, I saw, okay, this dude competes. He wants to work hard. So just, I, I you know, and I don't get to talk to the players. I don't get to interview them and see who they really are. But it's just little things like this to where, hey, man, this lets me know he's going to work hard in the league. He's go he he's not a dude that doesn't love football. And sometimes that could be the difference. I just want to show you that play. Yeah, no, I appreciate that because there's another play, and I'll get I know we're talking about wide receivers. It was a guard, Christian Mahogany, mm -hmm. who plays at Boston College. Sure. Who, you know, if you're looking at guards, he's a quality guard. I know Aisha Morrison, big fan of his, yeah. and done a great job of getting to know him and evaluating him and stuff. Christian Mahogany has a play in the uh against Miami, they're getting crushed. Boston College is getting crushed. Their quarterback throws an interception in the game, basically. And the, the Miami corner has got the ball and running up the field. Who makes the tackle? It's a 44-16 to 16 game. Mm -hmm. Who makes the tackle on the play? Christian Mahogany. Yeah. That that reminded me so much of a guy like Ron Leary, who played for the Cowboys. I know Ron didn't get drafted, but Ron played on a bad Memphis team but he played hard every single snap. Yeah. So when you show me, uh, uh, you know, when you show me Worthy making a play or Christian Mahogany, those are guys that those are the plays that stick with me. Yeah. That they that how they how they they have pride in their job, mm -hmm. but pride in their ability to you know to like I'm not going to let this ball go into the end zone. I'm going to stop this thing. I know we're getting beat. I know it's a bad play, but I'm going to do something to try and make it a better play. We have an interesting development here. Daniel Jeremiah has finally caught up to Vash Lombardi and Brian Broaddus. The first <laughs> offensive tackle that he has on the board is Talisi Fuaga. 
And and yeah. I'm just and I'm just doing backflips at this point. I'm just doing my little dance because I'm yeah. like, boy, they finally catching up to Brother Talise. Now I'm 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 I've been a coward this whole time, Brian. But you know where my heart is, right? Maybe I'm not yeah. comfortable enough to come out and say it. But you know that you know talking to me every week that I'm oh, no. I'm big on Talise Fuaga being my offensive yeah. tackle number one. And I just want to run through these next. Four, how he has him ranked right here. He has Fuaga at nine as his first tackle, Joe Alt at 10 as his second yeah. tackle here. But here's another in interesting development. Uh, Troy Fautenu from uh, yeah. Washington is his third tackle at, at, at 12th overall. And then we got Olu at 15. But I really wanted to tap in with you about Fuaga at nine because that's a new development yeah. for me. But Troy Fautenu, which I was, I was a big fan of in general. Um, yeah. he's the 12th overall guy. And I don't think we've talked yeah. about Fountainu very much, but what do you think about Fountainu, Brian? I'll tell you what, though. This is this is a good this is a good discussion. Fountainu is uh, when you watch him play left tackle, I mean, the more you dig in on him, mm -hmm. you're looking for that guy that's a, it's a, it's a powerful, you know, just plays in space. Uh, the, the, I always talk about lateral slide, the, the kick, the width of the pocket. The ability to get downfield, just to you know, look at that. It's just it's just beautiful to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just two point stance. He looks inside, he's looking for that blitzer, and he's just going to kick wide. And and that's where I can see. You know, look at here on the edge. Just the, the ability to, to capture the edge to get that push. You know, look at the just the footwork, and then you know that that's what you you love in an offensive tackle. And I, I, I was talking to some scouts about this guy because I was trying to kind of figure out who Dallas, what type of player will be for Dallas there at 24. I think there's certain guys that you can eliminate mm -hmm. at tackle. And this guy I kind of thought was going to be a guy that could be there at 24, and I'm not so sure anymore. I mean, the more that you watch him, the more that you compare. But that's just beautiful right there. Yeah. Look at the look at how he just you know, Michael hands, Penix does. Yeah. yeah, Michael Penix does not have to worry about a damn thing. He doesn't. I mean, he's looking he's looking right the whole time, knowing that his 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 front side that that, that rusher is not going to get to him. Yeah. And so I, I I I man, if he's there at, at twenty four, I think that would be a gift from the uh, from the draft gods. Myself, I just think this kid's just too. He's too athletic. He's too big. He's too tough. He's played a lot of games. Uh, it's just it's too good of a fit for somebody that needs a, a guy like this. I think this may be another Darnell Wright situation, Brian, where we just talk about him all year. Oh, Darnell Wright, yeah. Tennessee, he'll be there at 24. And before you know it, his yeah. ass is getting drafted he ain't 12. There. Yeah. I'm yeah. watching right. the, the great yeah. call on that. That's a great call. I'm yeah. watching, I'm watching Fuaga, right? Excellent yeah. hand fighter, snatch technique, boom, snatch technique right here. Uh, fantastic in space. I'm seeing, I'm seeing powerful hands, Brian. And, and look, funny thing about it, right? When I'm when I'm watching him, right, I'm like, man, but does he have like short arms or something like that? And then he goes to the combine, his arms are are yeah. are, are just fine. And I'm like, yeah. man, I'm watching this dude. Check, look, 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 like like tool belt, right? Flashing hands, bam, hands yeah. back inside, recovery, yeah. boom. Just that, just that, that nuance in his hand fighting, Brian. I'm watching a man, and I'm just like, I liked him the whole time. Yeah. And I was like, hey, man, I I hope he gets to Dallas, and I I just hope, I hope that they're not catching up to us. I hope that the that I hope that these other teams suck at drafting for real and just let him just come to us because he's a dude. I think Brian, he can, he can play guard tackle and center for you. I actually made the argument that I think he'll, he'll, he'll be a really good center because his movement is so well, like he can really yeah. get to the second level, move around, cut the defense and have like these, these difficult blocks, like if he's at left tackle, he can reach a one tech if he has to, right? Yeah. Or or yeah. or or if he's the you know if if he's somewhere and he has to reach like a like a backside tackle, uh, like a backside yeah. linebacker, but he doesn't have the angle and he has to earn that angle. He gets right. the angle. Then he's a powerful dude. Then he has great hands. Then he has nuance in his pass rush moves and his pass blocking moves. I'm looking at I'm looking at. Um, Fautenu, Troy Fats is what we call him. Shouts out to my guy Will Still. Troy Fats is what we call him because we can't say his last uh -huh. name. Fautenu, I'm I'm watching him, Brian. And I'm just like, man, it makes sense. And then when I think about it, is he better than Fashiono? And this is what made me really like, okay, uh, yeah. Troy Fautenu is 
a complete player. If I look at him, I think, okay, he's a fantastic pass blocker. He's a fantastic yeah. run blocker. Uh, Olu Fashino may be an incredible pass blocker, but there may be deficiencies in his run game. So maybe Bruegel is looking at this and going, okay, well, you may have to work on this with Olu, but with Troy, Troy Fashino, he comes fresh out the box ready right now on, on both sides. Yeah, I, I, I totally, man, I, like I said, there's, there's a lot to like about all these offensive tackles. I mean, sure. you, seriously, you the more you dig in, you know, I, I had a scout the other day uh, talk to me about Latham from Alabama. Sure. And I said, I go, because I was curious, I said, I, get, I, I, said, I said, do you feel like he could be a left tackle in this league? Mm. He goes, man, I think he's a right tackle myself. Yeah. He goes, but I think he could be an all-pro guard. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, there's some of these guys, like I say, that – you know, they, there's some of them that have some questions. Mims has the questions about, you know, the number of games that he's played. Uh, you know, it's we've we've talked about Paul before. And it's just there's all kinds of stuff with these guys. But overall, though, man, I'm I'm just I'm looking at these guys. I'm pretty excited. If you need an offensive tackle, this is the this is the right group to go with because they, there's there's quality throughout this draft with uh, with these guys. I can live with somebody liking Mims. I don't think Patrick Paul is very good at all, but I don't know. That's a whole other no. conversation. That's a whole other yeah. conversation. Um, speaking of Mims, let's get into this, Brian Bros. I got something else for you. We're just on offensive line. Let's just kind of keep it there for a little bit. Uh, our Marius Mims comes in at number 20 on yeah. on Brugler's board. This is uh, this is after Latham. Latham is like right around 16. There we go. This so, is Daniel Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah, this yes, is sir. Brute. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, Jeremiah. My fault, my fault. Pardon me, Mark, yeah. pardon me. Um, yeah. Jeremiah, yeah. right? So, right. Mims is at 20. Hold your horses now, Brian. This, this, this is going to get strange. Mims is at 20. Yeah. Guyton is at 22. All right, whatever. Right. Fine. Right. Graham Barton that I love the pieces is at 27. Right. And Jackson Powers Johnson is his 30th guy. Well, what the hell you think happened right here, Brian? Well, uh, you know what? He probably, uh, I don't know, because like I say, Barton to me, I've seen him play tackle. I haven't seen him play center. There you go. So that's why, that's why Powers Johnson to me would be my top center. Maybe mm -hmm. he's looking at Barton as that guy that, Teams are probably telling him Barton probably could play center, tackle, guard. Yeah. You, know, could, you know, teams are probably he's he's looking at versatility where Jackson Powers Johnson just is a center only. And so maybe that's maybe scouts are starting to talk to him about versatility and what you could potentially do with the guy. Mm -hmm. I like both players a lot, man, but you give me Powers Johnson. I'm going to I'm going to battle and I'm going to probably run the football pretty well. Oh, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to be physical up front. The quarterback's going to have a place to step up. I'm going to be a little bit nasty, a little bit mean inside. Both players are that way. Yeah. I think I think Daniel elevated Barton because of versatility. That would be my my hunch. Do you think when Jeremiah is putting this list together, right? Do you think that like position value plays a role in this? And and honestly it shouldn't. It should not at all. But right. like, hey, a pass rusher is more valuable than a center here. So maybe I'm dropping a center. Or like tackle is more valuable. So we're going to have yeah. to account for the fact that tackle is more valuable. I think that's nonsense, first of all, Brian. Because yeah. honestly, right here, Bo Nick shouldn't even be on this list. Just my personal yeah. opinion. Bo <laughs> Nick shouldn't yeah. be on this list. And he's ranked one spot higher than Jackson Powers Johnson. Listen, I know everybody watches film differently, but you can't tell me Bo Nix as a quarterback is better than Jackson Powers Johnson as a center. So I don't know what it is that Jeremiah's looking like. May maybe quarterback is just important. That shouldn't matter to me, yeah. but Bo Nix shouldn't even be on this list. If it's, if it's just my own person, he shouldn't be in the, in the top 50 at all. There's some dudes, up there, there's some dudes yeah. from 30 to 50 that are better than him right now. Yeah, and this is where this is where we're all different, and this is where the quarterbacks. And I I totally agree with what you're talking about here, but this is where the quarterbacks paralyze our board sometimes, mm -hmm. because Daniel's probably thinking, I can't just keep dropping Bo Nix because he's probably hearing from somebody or maybe his own eyes. You know, Daniel lives out there in Los Angeles, and he knows the Pac-12, and he you know he he's a big part of all that. Um, you know, and maybe he feels like with Bo Nix, it's like, you know, I'm, I see some good things 
And then he's probably talking to some people and it's like, you know, you can't leave Bo Nix out of this. You can't, you can't leave him out. And so what happens is you get to a point where you're putting together this list, especially a national list, and you're putting it out there and, and someone is going to criticize you because you have Bo Nix too low. On the flip side, we're going to criticize because he's too high, <laughs> because he's too high. Yeah, and this is this is where you can't win. This is where you can't win on the quarterbacks, because I love Dalen, uh, Jalen Daniels. I but I went to school at LSU. It's hard for me. You know, people go out oh, broadest. That's your LSU bias. Oh, you love neighbors too. Yeah, I do. It, so does everybody else in the country. You know, it's not an LSU bias, but it's just fact. These guys are better players. And I think that Daniel gets caught sometimes. These quarterbacks are hard to put in your top 50. Yeah. I think they are. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody likes the decisions that you're making on that. So, like, you, you, know, you and I are sitting there saying, yeah, Bo Nix shouldn't be in the top 50. Daniel Jeremiah, some other people are going, nah, Bo Nix should be a top 50 guy. And ultimately, it will play out. Ultimately, it he will be – He'll be a guy that that people like. Wow, really good NFL quarterback, or he's Mitch Trubisky. That's how this thing will shake. And if we're just looking at the film, right? And and, and yeah. that's all I got, man. All all, all I got is film. Yeah. I think Penix yeah. is a is a is a better quarterback than JJ McCarthy and Bo Nix. I Penix is my third guy. Yeah, I, and I'm 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 you know I just feel like though to me everywhere Michael Penix is one. Indiana football is no longer relevant because Michael Penix left. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere he has been, he has won. That's he's he the problem is though he's dealt with injury, but what has he done? Every time he's dealt with injury, he's come back yeah. and he's led his team to victories. Mm -hmm. He got a team, a Washington, a very talented Washington team, got him a national championship game. Yeah. Because of the way he played. You you can't tell me that Michael Penix is worse than Bo Nix. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just not going to go there. <sighs> I mean, you know, maybe maybe Bo Nix, you know, is because he's been playing for six years and maybe we see his improvement because I, I, I will say Oregon. I just remember him from Auburn. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, he's gotten so much better, though. He better. really has throwing the football. And, and they've got quality receivers and, yeah. you know, the, the scheme and all that really. I mean, he's a tough guy. He runs around. He's physical. I mean, there's a lot of positive about – but I just, like I said, I – I, I mean, I, I like, I like JJ McCarthy better than him, that better than Bo Nix. Yeah. That's and you know, I know there's a lot of people that are trying to run McCarthy up the board. Yeah, and you know, you know, thing about it is, is, is me when I'm when I'm building boards or whatever. I like head to head. I like I like common opponents. Bo Nix hasn't hasn't beat hasn't beat Penix like 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 one on one head up like if if all right we're just gonna we're just gonna show up at high noon and duel right <laughs> Bo Nix lost Bo Nix lost I don't know Penix is, is is just so impressive to me Penix is is just I I've seen him win these Pac twelve games these these high scoring games or whatever and then is go all right well he's in the playoffs and you know we. I don't want to say we like me, but we like them, right? Like they looked at Washington in this playoff, like okay, well maybe they're gonna get, maybe they're gonna be the team that gets whooped, like the Notre Dame team that'll go in the playoffs and get, whooped, or just any fourth seed team, right? And they got in there and they started competing with the with the best teams in the whole country. And that's because of Penix. I don't know what Washington is gonna gonna look like now that all these dudes are gone, but I'm just I, I was just so impressed with with Penix the way he just competes toughness throwing the football like him and Roma Dunze just have this magical all right pass interference we need it let's just go get it right now and they'll just draw they just know how to do it they just know how to do it that's just savvy that's just nuanced to me man and then he goes out to all these all these all these competitions the senior bowl stuff and all that. he just continues to just impress and whoop everybody and then um at the combine when everybody's throwing back to back to back he's making everybody else look horrible but he's he's the only one out there spinning it i don't know man i i just think jeremiah got this wrong i think a lot of people got this wrong i think Penix is much better than bo Nix, and he's uh he's also a little better than jj mccarthy also that's just me yeah i agree with you on that all right cool um brian do i have jordan morgan wrong Cause I love, I just pulled up some some Penix numbers. Pardon me. It, I, I think yeah. I, I think I'm. Do I have Jordan Jordan Morgan wrong here? I I look at Jordan Morgan as one of the best tackles 
in this draft. I don't think he's yeah. a dude that should be in the second round like that. I think there's going to be a run on Lyman at the end of the first round because they're, yeah. they're, they're going to go. They're going to run. I think Jordan Morgan is as good or better than a lot of those guys at the back of the draft. I think he's a player that I would take over – uh, Frazier, I think he's a player that I would take over Guy. Sure. You know, I'm 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 just yeah. looking at, at Jordan Morgan and it seems like everybody else has him at guard when I was like, nah, this dude is a tackle. He's he's fantastic. And yeah. I, and and just most of the, the big boards, you know, Jeremiah got him at forty four. When in real life, I'll take him at twenty four. If it, if it's me. Sure. I'll take sure. him at twenty four and I need left tackle right now. What am I missing with Jordan Morgan? Man, you and I and and I don't I don't feel like that it's like we're a couple of sheep just falling each each other over the cliff. I sure. mean, I, I feel like that you watch this kid play and he looks like a true left tackle. He, he, he the knee bend, the size, you know, you watch how he, his hands are a little low at times, but when he gets his hands on guys, you know, he's going to stop people. We talk about width of the pocket. All these things are positive about Jordan Morgan. And I, I don't get the, I don't get the, the lower ranking of him, uh, you know, 44. I, I think there's other offensive tackles that I would put at 44 other than him. You know, I mean, this this kid is just – he's such a natural player. There's such natural movement about the way that he plays. And, you know, right here you see example getting up the field on the screen. Look at that. I mean, target, I mean, yeah, you, you know, it's it's tough being out there blocking guys on the edge like he is. But he's done a he, – he, to me, it's just – there's so much good to his game. And – the ability to play on your feet, to stay active, to punch people, to settle, you know, just those are the kinds of things. I mean, look at the right there. He was just in a little bit of trouble and then was able to reset. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. Guy kind of got underneath. He tried to run him and he just, what does he do? He sits down on the guy. Yeah. You know, that's, I, I, I think there's a lot of positive things about Jordan and I, I'm with you on 24. I, you know, I, the, the ideal scenario for me would be for, Jordan Morgan to be there at 24. Maybe the Cowboys feel like that they could trade back mm -hmm. a few spots. Sure. Pick up at, you know, I know Buffalo was a team that was talking about trying to move up. And, you know, Buffalo's got the 99th pick. You know, so, yeah, if you're the Cowboys and you give me an opportunity to get a pick, like the 99th pick, before we start day three, because they don't have a pick right now to start day three. Mm -hmm. That's that fourth round. So if you can move back a few spots, but, you know, Morgan's kind of in that boat with me, with him and Frazier that I'd love to have. Yeah. I'd love to have. Would I love to have him, but also maybe go back a few spots and get a pick for him sure. as well? Yeah. Count me in. That's that's that would be my navigation. If I feel like the teams behind me uh, wouldn't jump on an offensive tackle, maybe. But man, every team needs offensive linemen. How far back you're willing to go? Do you want to trade? Sometimes you have to be in a situation where you don't want to trade away from a player because if you do, you're going to be sick if you trade back and that player then goes off that board. That's when you that's when you really question what you're doing uh, as an evaluator. And um, but yeah, the the, the Frasers and the Morgans. Give me those guys all day. I, I know what I'm going to get with those two cats. Yeah, and, you know, teams that win, you know, they just win a lot of games every year. They they don't always have opportunities to to get top-tier tackles like that because the best right. tackles normally go early, and they right. stay early. They they don't they don't really fall to 24 like that. So I'm looking at Jordan Moore, and look, and, and I just want to chat to, to listen to what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's damn Fuwaga. I ain't saying yeah. he's up here with all – and. Fashional, but he is a starting left tackle in my opinion. I think he's a plug and play left tackle, and I think he can he can get better because he's 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 going to get to the league. He's probably going to work on the small deficiencies. Send him to Duke. He's going to you know get a little bigger. I think he's a dude that can boogie for you right now. He's not a guard to me, you know. I think I think people just automatically write guards off as just short arm dudes or just not good at not good at tackle dudes. Guards are totally different dudes than tackle centers are totally different dudes than guards and tackles. Right? I'm just looking at Jordan Morgan. He's a pure your left tackle he could play for you right now and if you can talk me into taking him at 30 and you know getting another draft pick i'll take that that's not disrespectful to me but 44th player on your on your big board behind bo nix has <laughs> madness brian brought us man i'll tell you what but you know, like you say we uh we all see these players different i think daniel i i hope i hope he didn't and this used to happen to mike mayock sometimes with yeah. the nfl network there that Mayock would 
put his names out there, and then all of a sudden the names would flip. The names would switch. And then you're like, okay, I understand medicals and combines and stuff. Sure. But you also knew that he was talking to somebody. Yeah. You know, you knew that. And that's – and listen, I'll, I'll, I'm going to ride and die with my guys. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love being on this platform because we talk about a lot of players. I love being on the draft show because we talk about a lot of players. You know who I like and who I don't like, you know, and I'm willing to admit I, I've been wrong before. I've been right a lot, though, too. Yeah. So I'm if I ride and die, if I've got guys at a certain level from what I've seen in my my film evaluation of those guys, I tell people this all the time. Trust your first instinct. Trust your first instinct when you're looking at these players. Don't let outside things influence you and don't be a group speak guy yeah. or gal. You know, if you saw something in a player, fight for that player. And that's, you know, you're going to be right or wrong, but that's, that's how you get better at this. You, it's when you, when you, when it's when you all of a sudden you get into a mode where you're talking to others about these players and then it influences how you think about them. Yeah. That's when you get in trouble. I got three players I want to run by you and you tell me if they deserve to be top 50 players because they're not on Daniel Jeremiah's board. Um, okay. We're constantly fighting this fight about Chris Braswell. Why is he not in top 50 consideration? What's going on with him? Yeah. What, am, what am I missing about Braswell? Because I love him. What I'll, am I missing? I'll t yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Braswell, too. And that you might be in trouble. If, you're, if, you're, if you and I are a fan of too many of these guys, the same guy, you might, be, you might want to reconsider what you're doing there. Nate Wiggins. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Wiggins. There you go. Man, that weight was, that was a little unnerving. Yeah, he was right a little there. bitty, man. He's a little bitty. Yeah. Little bitty guy. Little yeah. bitty guy, yeah. It's rough, man. Uh, but, yeah, the thing with Braswell, though, he led the SEC in pressures. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, 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 there's so many things that you could see about him. Uh, you know, his his brother on the other side gets all the love, but when you when you really watch Braswell play, he makes a ton of plays on the move. He doesn't stay blocked. He's got strength. He can throw blockers aside. Mm -hmm. He can control with his hands, redirection. I mean, there's so much to like about this guy, sure. and I I just. I don't see why people don't have more love for him as a player. I, I I I get it. I get it. The guy on the other side is a is a is a to a lot of people is a super beast. But Braswell, to me, when you start to talk about the way guys consistently play down after down after down, he gives you exactly what you want. Uh, Brandon Dorless, is he a top fifty player for you? See, now that one would be close, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I I know we've talked about him sure. a bunch, and the thing that we all like about him is how many different spots he could play. Sure. But man, he is an excellent athlete. Uh I don't I wouldn't have him in my top fifty, mm -hmm. but I do like the player a lot. And I, I kind of feel like though that and I hate the old position flex crap that they tell us because that means that a guy they're doing that, you know, that's, that's been a, just a, an issue for them right now is this, all this, you know, they put guys at different spots and they, they, they don't get any better at the spot, you know, they need to keep it one spot. But mm -hmm. I just, I like Dorless a lot. And I, I just, the way he bends, the way he flattens to the quarterback, he's slippery. I think he's got range. We talked about all the different positions he can play. Sure. He is going to make somebody a really, really good pro just because of how well he's got length and he's got the upper body strength and he can play different positions and he can bend. Those are all things that you got to really like about him. Brandon Dorless or Braden Fisk? Uh, Fisk, because, okay, this is where, if you're talking about Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. this is where, this is where Fisk would come in. Now, I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't know if you've seen McKinley Jackson from Texas A&M. Yes, sir, I have. have yes, you? sir. Okay. Now, I was kind of in that mode of watching these one techniques. We got Sweat from Texas, mm -hmm. Fisk from Florida State. And then I, and then I jumped on this McKinley Jackson from Texas A&M and sure. then Mason Smith from LSU. Yeah. And I was kind of sitting there thinking, okay, maybe there are some one techniques in this draft. I, I this McKinley Jackson guy, I really, really like a lot. Yeah. But Fisk, that's a different cat. A, 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 that guy is a, and and Aisha says he's got a little swag to him, and I think she's right about the player. But you watch where the way that he plays, the physicality he plays at the point of attack. I think for the Dallas Cowboys, I have more questions about. 
one technique than I do the three technique. Now I, I know Osa is, you know, it's kind of, you know, failed at the end of the year. It kind of gets tired. It gets beat up. You know, mm-hmm. things happen. We need to see what's going to happen with Mozzie. But man, I, 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 Fisk to me would be a plug and play, and I would be pretty damn happy to have that. But if I can't get Fisk or I can't get Sweat, I was encouraged by Jackson, Texas A and M, and Mason Smith from LSU. Those were a couple of guys that, if it came down to it, I would be okay with that one technique that way. Thing about McKinley Jackson is that he's he's heavy as hell, so he works as a heavy guy, but he also has some 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 nice movement to him, you know. And he, and he's and, off the ball quick. Yeah, I was amazed at how quick he gets. I was thinking if Mozzie played this quick, oh yeah, nobody would be giving Mozzie crap. Yeah, about him. <laughs> yeah, but this guy, yeah, and you know he does. I think that he's going to have to develop some pass rush moves. Sure, but I've seen him use the club, the rip, the spin. I, he he's. You can use him on the twist stunts and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's quick up the field. I I mean, I was encouraged. I was thinking this was going to be just death looking at one techniques. Yeah. And these a couple of guys gave me a, a little bit of hope that maybe that if they have to, if they don't get one of the top ones, and you know, they drafted one first over, uh, you know, in the first round last year. And yeah, you know, so I don't think they'd go that way again. But I did give some hope. I did get some hope on these guys. What I like about Jackson is that he gives you the big boy stuff, but he doesn't like. Pardon yeah. me. He 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 does the super athlete big boy stuff, but he doesn't yeah. sacrifice the 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 bigness. You know, like like you know, he's not a one tech that's like two ninety, right? But but he's an athlete. Like he's an athlete, but he's still like three twenty or something, three twenty five or something like that. Um, very active player, high effort player. Uh, but he's also a powerful player, heavy player. He can get moved sideways a little bit, but that's more so him taking his own momentum sideways or him kind of missing the gap because he's over athleting it sometimes but uh mckinley i mean you could probably take him in the well we don't have a fourth round but he's like a fourth rounder maybe yeah i think that i think that you'd probably have to we're at the bottom of the board you'd maybe have to think about him around early yeah but yeah him and mason smith are kind of mason smith to me plays at lsu plays i mean he's incredible he was a five-star recruit Mm -hmm. he's dealt with injuries though he's been that's been a problem for him the injuries have been a problem yeah But, man, he plays a little tall at times. But, man, he is a super, super talented player when you watch him rush and, and, you know, play the run and stuff like that. But I I would take the A&M kid, but they're kind of in that same boat with me. That, you know, that – but Fisk, you know, you brought up Fisk. Uh, Just incredible testing numbers. But the testing numbers match how you watch him play on film. That's – that's what you look for right there. I'll tell you what, sir. Nothing brings me more joy or pride to myself. Uh, then when you throw me a curveball and I'm ready for it, you know, I know you hate the sappy stuff. I know yeah. you hate the sappy stuff, but I've been a fan of yours for a long. You hate the yeah, nah, 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 nah. don't sh- be quiet. You hate it. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. So when I come on this show, nothing brings me more. J- I right, man, br- hey, broad is coming. I need to be prepared. I be up at, at at midnight. Everybody else in the house sleep. I'm up. I'm watching film because if Brian Broad has asked me about McKinley Jackson. <laughs> and I, and Man, I pull I, up you film, know what? That's the, and I pull up film. It brings yeah. me joy to be ready, Brian Broaddus. There you go. Well, hey, I tell you what, that's that's one of the reasons why I do your show is because you are always ready. I, I, because there's times where I'm not ready. I'm glad somebody's ready here. Oh, I'm man. glad somebody's <laughs> doing the job. <laughs> That's another one for the books, Brian Broaddus. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're incredibly busy and you got stuff to do. You probably got food to cook. Uh, But I just thank you so, so much for coming to my platform. What you cooking today? I just saw that face you made. What you cooking today? I tell you what. No, I've got got to work at the boat show today. We got a show. I did. uh, I did. Yesterday, I did a chicken tamale pie for the guys. So made it out of a made my own cornbread as my kind of like my uh, tamale. filling or at my tamale and then the chicken and all that uh, got it all done and but uh, lucius alexander i work with on my show great guy he's a big fan of old el paso that old that old yeah. school enchilada sauce yeah. and chili i said i'm going to do something incorporating all old el paso i went totally old school on this thing and it, it was a big hit yesterday but yeah we got got boat show action today uh on a friday so uh we're going to do that and but man we're going to grind on a lot of tape uh uh, this weekend because like i say it's getting close man it's we're getting close. Getting, we're gonna wake up and 
it's going to be a Thursday morning. And you're going to be, you and I are going to be doing a podcast, getting ready for a draft. You yes. know that kind of thing. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's going to be fun. Uh, I'm I'm hoping to move to Dallas in the summer, and I'm I I'll probably give you a couple of months to, just to be away from you. But boy, I'm gonna bother the hell out of you once we Man, get settled. Bring man. it on. Bring it on. We will figure <laughs> out some way to keep working together. Trust sure. me on that. I, I ain't going to let you go away, man. You're too good at what you do. You Thank take you. care of yourself, man. I'll see you next week. Yes, sir. That sounds fun. Uh, draft show. 105.3 The Fan, G-Bag Nation, 2-7, to seven, and uh, Love to Start Podcast with Bobby Bell. Shouts out to him and Brian B-R-Y-N brought us on Twitter. Thank you very much, sir. You have a great day. Y'all have a good day, too. Peace.